greet everyone this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Blessing to be here with you today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your watch and your care over us, Father. We just ask your blessing, Father, upon this time together. Fill us with your spirit and give us wisdom, Father, to do your will. Again, we just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. Begin with here. Again in verse 25. title says, Come unto me, come to me. Um, a lot of times we read this and we think of, you know, it's often presented to us as a salvation message, a time that we would come to the Lord. But the Lord invites us to come to him at all times. It's not, whenever we talk about salvation, we're not talking about a one-time thing. We're talking about a lifetime experience, a lifetime involvement here. So let's read this with those things in mind. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone who, to whom the Son wills to reveal him. In verse 28, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This, uh, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is an invitation from the Lord. Like I said, this is often used for a salvation message that you come and you just, you uh, ask Jesus into your heart and, You're saved and now you have a peace and rest, but that's not what he's talking about here. All you who are weary. And that's the invitation that the Lord has given to all of us that we can rest in him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We spend so much of our lives in turmoil, upset about this, or upset about that, or worried about this, or worried about that. And the invitation that God has for us as his children and disciples is one of rest and peace. There's so much anxiety and stress. We're so worried about everything. But that's not what God wants for us. To trust the Lord is to let him be in charge of things. He talked about being revealed. These things are revealed to the infants and not to the wise and the, the understanding of those. And so oftentimes we are of those who try to be the wise, the intelligent, the one who's above all these things. and. What that does is bring an invitation to stress in our lives. Christ is inviting us to trust him. And where trust is, there's rest. Where trust is, there's peace. When we can let our lives go and trust him, we can have this rest and peace. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
It's just a natural result. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden light. We make this so difficult. We make it so hard. Much of the time that much of the problems that we have in church is someone just not trusting and not resting in the Lord. Just being unwilling to just surrender, just to let go and just trust the Lord. His burden is light. His yoke is easy. To follow the Lord, to obey the Lord, and to do what he wants us to do, to love our neighbor, to love God with all our heart, to walk in his steps, is not hard. The hard part is us not wanting to do it. Not willing just to trust him. I've heard people say whenever they talk about the cross that, that Jesus said, if anyone comes after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross. And I've heard people say that the cross was trying to keep the teachings of Jesus. That's exactly opposite of what Jesus is saying here. His yoke is easy and his burden light. Whenever we're trying to trust in ourselves or our own performance, we are trusting in ourselves. And it's hard to do what God wants us to do. But when we yield ourselves to do things his way, we can rest and find a rest there. We find a trust an assurance and peace with just doing things the Lord's way. So many people show their lack of having anything real by their perseverance or by their persistence in trying to put more burdens upon themselves. Trying to restrict this or restrict that or be real uh, denying themselves. The simple things that God has created, trying to overachieve in the appearance of their doing right, and that they're full of stress. There's no rest there, there's no peace there. They try to be religious. They try to do without chocolate. They try to do without coffee. They try to do without. There's just a never-ending list of things that they try to put burdens upon themselves, thinking that that is what it means to deny their self. Putting more and more regulations upon themselves and saying, this is what it means to deny yourself. But that's not denying yourself. That's feeding you as being the one in charge of yourself. There's no peace there. There's no rest there. To deny yourself is to quit worrying about what you do and just trust the Lord and obey Him and just simply walk in His steps. People are arguing all over about how we can form a church. And so we think of all these things that the church shouldn't have or shouldn't have or do this or that. And if we would just trust the Lord and walk in this path that he's set forth, all those things will take care of themselves. In Timothy chapter 2, Verse 14, well, let's begin in 11. 
It says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. For it is a trustworthy statement. For if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. He's not going to change who he is. But we can trust who he is. We forget that God is good. That's just period. God is good. In one of the verses, it talks about if a, well, if a, if your son asks for a piece of bread, will you give him a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will you give him a rock? Is that how a father treats their son? No. You try to give them what they need. And it's just a picture of who God is. Even in nature, we can see people who've done, or even in, in the world, in society, in people, we can see people who have treated people horribly, and yet a man can forgive them. Maybe you've done something wrong to someone else and someone has forgiven you and you know that it's gone. How much more if a man can do something like that can God? If you've got times in your lives where your parents or someone above you or someone even with you has done something that was good for you because they're actually looking out for you and caring for you. How much more God? We may not like what we are asked to go through. That's not the question. The question is, 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 is God good or is he not? Can we trust God with our lives? There's where rest is. That no matter what we go through, God is in control. Verse 10 of this 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, For this reason I endure all things, for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, and with it eternal glory. Paul was willing to endure all things for the brothers, for the church. He chose to. And it said this is this, the, the uh, trustworthy statement. And then he talks about that God is going to be faithful. And the point is, is that God is worthy to be trusted. And then verse 14, it says, Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. How much of religion, Christianity, is spent just wrangling about words instead of someone just actually trusting the Lord and walking? Not worried about what's going to happen. Trusting that God is in control of what's going to happen. Nothing that happens to you takes God by surprise. He lets you go through everything in your life, not because he's mad at you, 
Not because he's trying to hurt you. It's because he knows what is good for you. And when you won't trust God with what's good for you, guess what? Stress, anxiety, unrest, no peace. What's better than just having peace and rest? There's nothing more pleasant than just having peace and rest. And we strive for all these things. It says, remind them of these things. Charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words which are useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Why, do they, why does it ruin them? Because it does exactly opposite of what God wants us to do. And that's trust Him. Knowledge puffs up. One of the biggest problems in society today is everybody knows everything. They know everything. That's why there's so much anxiety because there's very little just simple trust and faith. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. How do you accurately handle the word of truth? You just take it and apply it and put it into your life. You don't wrangle about it. You don't argue about it. You don't discuss all about it. You just do it. Verse 16, but avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to other, under, further ungodliness. Worldly and empty chatter. That's not talking about what the world's talking about. It's just worldly and empty chatter talking about the Bible. Trying to figure all this out. Wrangling about words is worldly and empty chatter. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetius, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place and upset the faith of some. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. I'll skip on down here. No, let's go ahead. Now in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now flee from useful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil having been held captive by him to do his will. This goes along real well with the Matthew chapter 7 where it talks about judging others. Do not judge that you will not be judged. That doesn't mean you don't point out what's wrong. But to have foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels, 
You know, I think there's probably a lot of people that are out evangelizing that I think the reason they go is so that they can quarrel with somebody to try to prove that they have the truth and to better someone instead of actually just trying to encourage people to have some faith and trust in the Lord. It's kind of fun to argue, to have a spiritual sword fight. But it's vain. It's worthless. Our goal is to trust the Lord. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to all, able to teach, and patient when wrong. With gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God may grant repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. Wisdom is realizing when to apply truth. Just using the truth to a sword, as a sword to whittle people down, put them in place, is of no value. Wisdom sometimes has to listen and wait and sit quietly by until there's a place where Maybe someone is willing to listen. Maybe God will grant repentance unto life. We are trying to do it ourselves. We're trying to force someone to understand or to see. But it is God who grants that repentance. And oftentimes, all the time we spend arguing, debating, all we're doing is teaching someone to build a wall. I think a lot of the time, God just needs us to get out of the way. We worry about convincing someone. It takes faith just to trust the Lord when no one else will listen, maybe. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens light. It's not talking about the circumstances. It's not talking about making everything just wonderful. It's talking about having rest and peace right in the middle of a hard situation. Right in the middle of a struggle. But knowing that the Lord has all these things in his hands. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understandings. It's not our place to fix everything. It's our place to trust the Lord. I think it's one of the simplest things that we can do. So take his yoke. Upon us, for his yoke is easy and his burden light. It's only light when we let it be. His yoke is easy when we let it be. If it's not, it's because we've we've not got his yoke.
We've got our own. Or we've got somebody else's. May the Lord add his blessings to his words. Lord, thank you for your goodness again and your mercy. We thank you, Father, that your way is best. Help us to have courage and grace just to follow it, to take up your yoke. Lord, again, we just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone have anything you want to share? Oh!